Hi gang, it's your old pal Jim Sterling here with the State of Sterling or something like that. State of the Sterling Address. We'll come up with something. It'll be along those lines. I've been meaning to do this for months since I don't play unedited games with lots of boring things in them anymore. I don't have somewhere to just chat the shit, give you updates about, you know, the, the business, what I'm up to, all that kind of balls. So I thought I'd start like a, you know, what they, what the kids call a vlog about roughly once a month or whatever, just to keep you abreast of things going on. And maybe I won't get like the same questions every week in Jimquisitions because I'll be able to have told you in these. So the State of Sterling episode one. We'll just play some B-roll over this. You don't have to really look at anything. You can, unless I ever have anything to show you. You can just have this play in a tab while you masturbate to India summer or something. Do whatever you want to free country. As long as it's legal. So, I'll keep you updated with what's going on Jimquisition wise and all other related ventures, but I'll kick off while we're on the subject of me answering the same question every week with music. Why does the Jimquisition use Born Depressed as its theme song now after it was using Stress by Jim's Big Ego? Well, the answer is it uses both. On a typical Monday episode, the intro music is now Born Depressed by Drill Queen, and the outro music is stressed by Jim's Big Ego. Fact of the matter is, I love both songs, and if you have followed my work for any amount of time, I say that quite often, but if you have, you'll know that I can be pretty fickle and whimsical sometimes, and I'll change my mind at the drop of a hat. I think I just get bored easily, but I found it difficult to let go of Drill Queen because they've been with me since the beginning, since we started the Jimquisition, and it really is a fucking good song. It's like one of those things that seemed tailor-made for you even though it wasn't, so... I just couldn't let it go. But on Jimquisitions that aren't on a Monday, we reverse it. We reverse polarities. So the intro uses Stress by Jim's Big Ego, and the outro uses Born Depressed by Drill Queen. See, we go swapsies. And it's quite fitting because doing two Jimquisitions in a week with the kind of production I try and put on them is an additional boatload of stress. So thematically, it works. I mostly like this because old British sitcoms, uh, chiefly stuff that Rick Mail, uh, rest in Piece and Adrian Edmondson did, things like Filthy Rich and Cat Flat, The Young Ones, and of course Bottom, which is one of my favourite sitcoms ever. So there you go, that's why the music is what it is. Now let's get a quick bit of self-promotion out of the way in terms of wrestling. I know not everyone's into it, so we'll keep it brief, but tomorrow, at the time of talking, Saturday, February 10th, I'll be at Byron Baptist Church, it's Mississippi, for the Pro Wrestling Ego event, The Broken Path, where Stirdust is hosting the $10,000 match. What's in his briefcase? It's like loot boxes. Who knows? People are going to have to wrestle to find out. And on a personal note, let me just say how wild the last few months have been in that regard. Stirdust, of course, was created as one of several Jimquisition side characters. Just another excuse for me to dress up silly and be silly. It all started because I used a couple of seconds of that silly CGI Stone Cold Steve Austin head that they used in, I think it was Unforgiven 2001. It's like hilariously bad and I just used it for a little goof in the Jimquisition, but a couple of seconds of that and WWE not only content ID'd it, they blocked it from being viewed in several countries, which meant I had to take the video down and re-edit it because I can't have the Jimquisition not viewable in America, are you kidding me? So rather than just complain about it in a video, I thought I'd do what the greatest showman in games media does and make an entire joke character out of it, so I paid to have have this Stardust costume made and made my face up all like Stardust from WWE. Better known to fans around the world these days as Cody, the American Nightmare. What a lovely boy he is. But the joke with Stardust was everything was legally changed just enough to be original intellectual property belonging to the Jimquisition. So for me to have then gotten in touch with the local wrestling promotion here in Mississippi, propose a continuation of that joke, then have the joke turn into a real wrestling thing, quite by accident on my part, is not only amazing, but one of the many reasons why I like pro wrestling as much as I do. Because it's that bloody 
gloriously absurd. But that's that anyway. Uh, let's talk about some stuff that we have talked about in the past that has not yet materialized that people have been asking about. We'll start off with Jim Sterling's licensed game experience, which I announced about a thousand years ago. Basically, I made the executive decision to ax that project, mostly because it was just taking too bloody long. Nothing against the folks who were working on it, but they were doing it in their spare time and it just wasn't going anywhere. They ran an idea and a pitch by me and I was like, that's cool. They got some key art together and it looked like the project was gonna go underway, but then it was like months and months and nothing was happening. And it got to a point where I felt that the wait was not gonna be worth the payoff. And I don't particularly blame the people who were working on it. They had their busy schedules, I have my busy schedule, so pfft. That said, Justin McDaniel, who you all know as the art director of the Jimquisition, is also a game developer in his spare time. He's been learning the ropes there, and so we decided to do it in-house, as it were. And that's all I'm gonna say on that for now. I don't wanna say anything about any more game projects until we actually have real tangible things to show you. That that just seems the safest bet, right? The other project we announced a long time ago, but we've not had any public developments on, is The Loose Boys, which is an animated show that I'm working on with Just Jonathan. That's his name. Old Double J. Now, Justin put the announcement trailer together for me. I got really excited and just had to publish it. But then we found out that animation's really hard, everyone. Could you imagine such a thing? We're hoping to have a pilot up of that sometime in the near future. Again, I don't want to give any specific dates or anything because we just don't know because we still work continuously on the Jimquisition and try and do all the other projects around it. So it's taken time, but it's not been abandoned or anything. In fact, we've been constantly, consistently talking about it and Justin's been constantly working on an animation style that works for him because he's just learning this kind of stuff. That's part of the deal with some of these new Jimquisition branded products we're working on. We're trying to do some things that are not formulaic, more outside of what we're normally, you know, outside of your comfort zone, if you want to phrase it like that. And in addition, we're always trying to improve the Jimquisition. On a personal level, I've been really pleased with with the Jimquisitions we've put out in 2018 thus far. They've been quite punchy episodes and I've been trying to space out the episodes that focus on loot boxes and stuff. I'm not unaware that some people find it tiring that I talk about the same topics a lot and I do try and be receptive to that, you know? Like, as I say, space out those topics and put more unique stories like that Grand Theft Adelaide episode in between. Here soon we're gonna be looking into upgrading the camera that we use, but I've always been a content over production values kind of person, so making sure the reason you actually come and watch the Inquisition, you know, the opinions, the thoughts, the heart, the soul, the meat of the show. Making sure that's still on point, still good, still top notch, as top notch as I can make it, remains the most important thing. On that note, we were going to get a better camera sooner, but really I need to upgrade the computer because it's just not able to cope with modern video editing. It served me well for many, many years, but just this week it's found itself unable to even start running games anymore anymore. Poor little fuckers on its last legs. It's why there's not been any sort of gameplay videos from me lately. But I'm anticipating myself to be nice and modernized in that regard by Monday, which means I've got to suffer through editing one final Jimquisition on this one, which is going out of its way because computers always know when they're being replaced. It's going out of its way to make these last few days as big a pain in the ass as possible. But I'm looking forward to having everything nice and modernized and up to date, especially because I learned that my Warframe videos have been looking like shit on YouTube because I didn't trick YouTube into displaying 1080p videos correctly by uploading them as 1440 videos. So I'll start doing that from Monday. I mean, it's a fucking joke, isn't it? That'll about do it. Some of these will be a bit more sort of personal lifey, I think, but this one is more admin business. Get it out of the way. One last thing. Du Camille Du Hardcore will be coming back sometime this year for defos. There's more commentocracy coming. In fact, just recently, we received his new waistcoat complete with frilly frills. 
from Die Another Day, who did the new Jimquisition waistcoat and made Stirdust's outfit. So I'm very excited to be able to give you a Ferillia, more historically accurate commentocracy in the near future. I think that'll about do it. I've been banging on long enough. See you later. Bye.